Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. So I have a hand, um, 2-5 no limit, and uh, at the Hard Rock in Florida. Okay. Um, $1,000 effective. It's a straddled pie. It's a Mississippi straddle. Okay. So he's... The villains, well, one of the villains straddles from the from the button, and I'm in a small blind with uh, red pocket jacks. So Mississippi straddle means that the button's going to make it ten, right? And you're first to act. Is that right? That's that's correct. Does they have the ultimate last straddle or what or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. So it goes like it'll go, it'll go the blinds and then around, um, okay. and then the button, the straddler does have the last action. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you, all right, so you got jacks, and you're basically what I like to say, like the ultimate under the gun here, right? Because you're first, Jack. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm, for, I'm, yeah, so I open to $35 mm-hmm. and folds around to the cutoff who three bets me to um, $105. Okay. It, it folds to me, and I call. Do you have any info on the the um the cutoff at all i do yeah so um he's he's a semi-reg there he's um he's pretty aggressive he um he's a little bit he's pretty loose pre-flop um he he definitely put you into tougher spots post-flop okay um i say he's laggier than the average player one thing that i will say is that you can sometimes like i've actually implemented this before you can actually sometimes have a limp re-raising range here from the blinds and a button straddle Okay. Um, because, you know, your range is so strong from opening, it will sometimes... Per- I've actually seen good players do this. Now, I, I'm not really a huge proponent of limp re-raising, and well, I'm not in a full ring game, but this is mm-hmm. a kind of an interesting scenario where mm-hmm. you can sometimes do it. It sometimes will stop people from raising from behind because... Uh, and you sort of disguise the strength of your hand as well. Just something of note. Obviously, the straight raise is fine to 35. So he three bets to 105. He's sort of regular, and you call. Yeah. No, and I thought about that pre-flop, too. I definitely agree. Um, but I just went kind of more standard and open. So, yep. yeah, the flop comes um, 954 rainbow. Yep. Um, I check, and he checks back. So check, check. Yeah, there's like $215 in the pot at this okay. point. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So you probably um, think that you've got the best hand now, right now, right? I'm sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, he's yeah, but especially against his pre-flop pre-flop range, I, I believe that. So the turn is the five of clubs, and it brings in a backdoor flush draw. Okay. With, um, so the board is nine of clubs, five x four x five of clubs. All right. So nine of clubs, five x four x nine of clubs. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you do not and have a club in your lead. hand. I do not. I have red jacks. Yep. Um, and I decide to lead. I bet 135. Okay. Um, what do you think about that lead? I mean, that's fine. I mean, I mean, I would. I mean, I don't know if I would necessarily bet that much, but mm-hmm. you. Okay. See, well, I'm not going to get into this crap. <laughs> I was just about to say, well, you. You don't you ha- you have a don't have a club in your hand, which is bad because that means that your opponent mo- has more of a chance that they have a club and they want to not have a club in their hand to call turn. But oh yeah, no, that makes I'm sense. Done with yeah, that. yeah. Well, I guess. <laughs> no, <laughs> no yeah, I just. More... You, I mean, we <laughs> can go down that rabbit hole, and it makes my head hurt. But uh, um, but I mean, yes, that'll come into play later if anything. Yeah, yeah, but that's the. I mean, the idea is is that you actually want to have a club in your hand so your opponent doesn't have it, so they'll call down lighter. But that's fine. I mean, I would bet 100 to 125, 135. Okay, that's fine. So he makes the call. Yep. So yeah. he calls, and the river. There's about 485 dollars, almost 500 dollar pot. Yep. The river um, peels off the ten of spades. Okay. So um, we've got nine five four five. Backdoor flush draw, ten of spades. Yep. Um, no backdoor flush draw complete. So, right. Um, he, I mean, <laughs> what do you do? Here? I would still do bet. Just... No, I would. St- I would definitely still bet here. Make it look like you. I mean, the pro. The, again, this is sort of. You have such a tight configuration here because you open from. Right. I mean, here's the thing. If it wasn't such a tight configuration, it's an easy bet because. 
I feel like he's going to have a lot of ace highs here. And also, okay. too... And the other thing, too, is, is that what people... They don't apply is that, like... Say he looks at that board and he's like, oh, I'm the preflop three better. Like, I'm going to check back 9-5-4 with my entire range. That's kind of ridiculous because and they don't make this adjustment you don't have fives and you don't have fours opening from the super under the gun right so he can right. look at what is wrong. a non sort of a, a ragged board that the three better might think is not the best for his range and, and attack it because of that but anyways the point that i was going to make is in five of clubs backdoor clubs they bust out if he checks back ace queen ace king you try to go for some value bet like 150 or something like that um and mm -hmm. he's just going to call with an over pair uh, and okay. you know, you might get a hero call from ace high. Okay. Um, I like that actually. So I, I did value bet. Um, I bet $275 into 485. See, that might be a little bit on the larger side. Okay. That, that might be a little bit on the larger side when you start to yeah, bet over so the size of half over pot. half pot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he tanks and he ships it all in for, about seven hundred and seventy dollars. So, what kind of pot odds um, are we looking at here? So, seven hundred and seventy dollars. What's the pot, and how much to call? So, five hundred to call, so right? Yeah, yeah. It's about um, yeah. It's about like two thousand five hundred to call, right? Two thousand five hundred to call. Is that right? No, oh no, fifteen hundred yeah. five hundred to call. Five plus seven seven, so um, yeah, thirteen hundred maybe. Fifteen hundred to call. Fifteen hundred five yep. to call. You you guys both started with two thousand with one k, right? So the total pot would be two thousand. That by the way, that's an easy exactly. way to look at it. So you're getting three to one. Here's the thing, which is sort of mm -hmm. interesting, is is that I feel like this would be a tougher spot if you did take my sizing any raise, because you would wonder if he was trying to like blow you off of what it looked like you were trying to value bet. When you bet two seventy five here and he jams, scary. No, I wouldn't. I don't. I wouldn't call here. Nine five four five. What do you think he has that he's bluffing with here? Um, well, I mean, knowing a little bit of him, I know he's got a wide to three betting range, um, and I know he tries to maybe push me off a little bit. I'm thinking maybe some kind of backdoor flush draw, um, like an ace high hand. Um, you know, I don't know. If he's starting that bet on... The by the way, block. by the way, when I said don't go down the rabbit hole, this is something to bring up. And it, it might mm -hmm. be true, uh, mm -hmm. King of Deuces, but raising all in here with a busted club draw is very bad on his part. Why is that? Because he blocks all my bluffs. Right. You don't have clubs. So okay. you're, you're skewed towards value. So that would be a very bad bluff to do that. So... Now, obviously, you don't have any clubs, and I don't know if this guy knows it. I mean, mm -hmm. I just uh, – it's, it's real tough for me to come up with uh, – it's real tough for me to come up with a bluff here. And I wonder, like, did, would he ever be playing, like, aces really cagey here or something like that? I just – I don't well, know. I'm, uh, I'm telling exactly you, like – Exactly, so – Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I was thinking either cagey aces or, like, maybe pocket nines, right? Yeah. I don't know if um, – Maybe a little full play there to get tricky. Um, but I've seen him do some crazy things. Um, and I tanked and tanked. And um, I, I called. Okay. And uh, he said, you're good. And I rolled over pocket jacks and it was good. And you never saw what he had? Never saw what he had. I didn't, I didn't want to make him mad. I just kind of just showed my hand. I was good. So, you, so do you think that it's the right call? Did you ever post this hand up on the forums or anything? I did not post his hand of forums. I just just talked about it with a couple other my friends at, at the casino that know him as well or uh -huh. that have played. And um, I don't know. Maybe it's just player specific. I, I don't know. I just I don't know. <laughs> it's probably not the right call in the long term against in a vacuum against regular people. You know. Well, thanks for the call. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200, click on the link right there.